Hello, uh, I'm Steve Ross, uh, General Manager of Product and Marketing for Nikon, and um, today what we're going to do is follow up on some of the uh, previous uh, lectures, uh, specifically on polarized light differential interference contrast, or DIC, and phase contrast. And what I'd like to do is give more of a practical um, view of how you actually get these techniques to work on the microscope, what are the components, and how you would adjust them and troubleshoot them to uh, get the techniques uh, you know, implemented for uh, practical applications. Okay, so two of the critical components, we're going to start with polarized light um, in a very simple way, uh, polarized light as it relates to differential interference contrast, or DIC. Uh, we have what's called a polarizer and an analyzer, which is basically another polarizer, that when you cross these two, you can actually see that you get to a point of extinction where the light uh, is no longer coming through and you've extinguished uh, uh, the light through cross polars. And as you rotate off extinction, you can see the light coming through. So where these components sit on the microscope is the polarizer in the light path here, in the transmitted light path, which we've covered in previous lectures. And the analyzer, or second polarizer, sits in the microscope, actually goes into our fluorescence filter turret, and it clicks in place, and then two clicks to the left and it is in our light path. And the analyzer sitting in the microscope actually in the fluorescence filter turret so that you could do multi-dimensional imaging and switch between DIC and fluorescence imaging. So now we have these two uh, polarizers in place and what I want to do first is look at simple polarized light. So now if we put the polarizer in the microscope with the uh, analyzer, you can see now uh, through the eyepieces on the camera, because we have an eyepiece camera here, that we can move closer and closer to extinction and when we reach extinction the light is completely attenuated and you have a black background on the camera. Okay? So you have light coming through and then as you're moving towards extinction you get to a point where you have completely cross polars and the way you're going to adjust this in the lab in older DIC systems, some people would like to look at what they call the Maltese cross at the back uh, um, aperture of the microscope, but uh, nowadays many new DIC systems don't allow you to do that uh, due to the construction of the system, and the eye is very sensitive to light and dark. So the best thing to do is to adjust your polarizer crossed with your analyzer such that you get the darkest background. That's how you know you're at extinction. And that's what we've achieved here. We have a very black background. And now when I put a specimen in place that's sensitive to polarized light, you can see, uh, let me just touch up the focus there, like these paper fibers, these nice interference colors that are generated from the um, phase shift of the polarized light because all of the waveforms are going in the, in the same direction. Okay? Um, and if you can see as we go off extinction or we, we vary the uh, amount of extinction, you can see the colors shifting on the camera. Okay? So that's the first step in differential interference contrast. Following that, you'd want to make sure you have two other components in place that are your Namarsky prisms. Um, this is actually a modified version of a Namarsky prism. It's uh, a quartz, two quartz wedges that are cut at a certain shear thickness or angle that allows you to um, basically tailor the distance between the two rays going through your specimen such that they are either further apart giving you more contrast or closer together giving you more resolution. And we make several different types of those for the microscopes depending on where you want that trade-off to be. And this prism slides into the what's called the nose piece or the objective turret right underneath the objective lens like so. So you have one prism here, another prism below the objective, polarized light, and that's really all the components you need for DIC. So once you know that you have extinction 
You can put your prisms in place, and now we'll switch specimens to a cheek cell preparation, which will give us a nice, uh, a nice specimen to see uh, the DIC working. So now you can see these cells in, in DIC on the camera, and you can see the nucleus, and you can see uh, sort of a three-dimensionality. Um, if you're at extinction, you really don't get much of an image, but what you need to do is move the cameras, the uh, polarizer slightly off extinction, and now you can see on the camera that you get this nice three-dimensional look of the cells. Okay, just touching up the focus there. Now, the other thing that's important to notice is that when you're going on the other side of extinction, you actually change the directionality or the shadowing of the DIC image. So you can see the shadow on one side, and going through extinction to the other side, the shadow flips orientation. It looks like the light's coming from the other direction. Um, in DIC, it's actually very important, if you're looking for contrast, that you orient your specimen to uh, enhance the contrast of the structures you're interested in. Because you only have the contrast in one orientation in differential interference contrast. So now we're going to switch to phase contrast on the microscope, and this is a because this is a universal condensing system, we're able to do that with the same uh, components without switching out the condenser. What we'll want to do is pull out our polarizer and remove our analyzer, and now I want to go through phase contrast and how to adjust it. So let me just put a face contrast lens in place and remove our upper prism and place in now a phase ring and now you can see a very different image on the camera um, there's the same cell with the nucleus but now what you're seeing is that the um, phase image is very contrasty. It doesn't look very three-dimensional, but it gives you very nice uh, contrast, uh, light and dark. It's almost a binary image. And some people prefer phase contrast because it doesn't have intensity gradients like DIC that gives you that three-dimensional image, but the high contrast and the almost binary look of it, white and black, allows you to quantify things uh, uh, better than you can when you have a gradient of intensities. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is talk about how you align phase contrast. So when we talk about phase contrast, we know that you have a phase ring made of a uh, quarter wave plate and neutral density material inside the objective lens. If you look down the back aperture of the phase contrast objective, you can actually see that phase ring, which again is the ring of neutral density material in a quarter wave plate that acts to attenuate the zero order light that's basically your background. It knocks down the intensity of that and then causes a phase shift of the non-diffracted light relative to the diffracted light coming through the microscope. And that's going to enhance the contrast, giving us a maximal contrast. And you can see those, those letters are in green rather than in black on a standard objective. And it tells you also what phase ring to use, in this case a phase two ring. And uh, shows you that this is DLL phase or dark light light. As we talked about during the phase lecture, there are many different variants on phase contrast. That's one of them. You also have a phase annulus that is in this condensing system right here. There's your phase annulus. So you can see right through it, it's basically just restricting the angles of illumination in the uh, microscope system. So that's basically all we're doing. We're restricting those angles of illumination and then overlaying in a conjugate aperture plane the phase ring with this annulus. Okay, and there's two adjustments that move this annulus in two axes so that you can move it around to align it in the condensing system. Um, the phase annulus restricts all of the illumination to a specific area, uh, making the light that's coming through, your zero order light, hit specifically on that ring in the objective lens. So it's very important that that annulus and the ring in the objective lens be aligned as it is right now. And if we switch to the camera again, 
you can see that looking at the back aperture, here's our ring of illumination, and what you can see now is that if I move this phase annulus, you can see the ring in the objective lens behind it. Now that these are off, um, off alignment with one another, if I move back to the image, you really can't see any contrast in the uh, image of the cell. Now as I move that annulus back, you start to see that contrast returning, and when you hit perfect alignment, you see really nice contrast in the cells. Okay? And let's just see what that looks like at the back aperture again. We're moving that phase ring relative to the annulus, actually the annulus relative to the ring. We're moving that annulus back, and once they're perfectly overlapping, we get that nice high contrast phase image. Okay. Um, normally, a system will have two axes of adjustment, and in this case, the adjustments are right in the front. Uh, depending on your microscope, they could be in different locations. And often, uh, when you do your color illumination, you may not just be in one axis, so you may actually have to move this in a couple of different axes. Uh, it's very much like when you're adjusting the condenser for color illumination. So again, that's really all there is to phase contrast. If it's not working, generally it's a simple alignment issue. Um, the other thing that would be obvious at the back aperture, if the system's not working, is that your annuli has to be specifically sized to match that objective lens and condensing system. So if it's not working and you have the components, they're either out of alignment or you have a mismatch between the size of the phase ring and the phase annulus, okay? Thank you.